This episode of Spectre Sound Studios is brought to you by Manscaped. Hey everybody, how's it going? Hope you're gonna have an amazing weekend. I'm just getting my day started here. Thought I'd start off with a nice round of your comments and questions because what you guys have to say is very important to me. I love hearing from you guys and I believe me, I've gotten some amazing episode suggestions along the way as well. If there's a video subject I haven't covered yet in terms of recording or video production, that kind of stuff, hey, leave a comment below if it's cool. I might put it on viewers' comments. If it's really cool, I'd just make, make a dedicated episode about it. Anyway, let's get right to it. What are the top selling records you produced? I have a confession to make. I have produced no top selling records. All I've done is run a studio since 1998, learned a whole bunch along the way about the whole thing about production process, dealing with musicians and what it really takes to run a small project studio. And what I've done with the show is tried to pass on that knowledge as best as I can, hopefully to help you guys avoid some of the pitfalls along the way, because here's the truth of it. Most of us are not going to make top selling records. Most of us are gonna be recording ourselves or the local bands and trying to find some joy in that. If that's what you're looking for, great. Cause I am not gonna sit here and bullshit you guys and say, hey, I learn from me, I can help you make a hit record. No, 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 I can just help you make a slightly better sounding record. If that's what you're after, happy to have you along for the ride. Tone is in the speaker, but there is way more to it than that. Pick any speaker cabinet and tell the answer the dominant factor when you switch amps from a Mesa Dual Rec in the red channel to a clean Fender Twin. Clearly, the amp section has a lot to do with it as well. Going from a clean amp to a full gain amp makes a difference in the sound? Wow! Your observation skills are clearly unparalleled. How about observe this? You know, you don't even have to change amps for that effect. All you gotta do is go full on distortion on a rectifier and switch it over to the clean shell. You don't even have to change the amp! Didn't you even consider that? Dude, I am trying to fucking help you. I don't understand the fucking resistance here. If you're looking for a certain sound, changing your amp out probably isn't going to get you where you want to go. Changing the speaker is going to have a far more profound result. Of course, going from clean to dirty is gonna make a difference. Nobody's arguing that, nobody said otherwise. Please, for the love of crumb, try paying attention to what I'm saying here, instead of trying to come across like the smart guy, because you're failing miserably at it. On the subject of shipping and atrocious job DHL does of it, I've heard a saying from one big reverb seller, pack everything like DHL is gonna be shipping it. I assume that's for a reason. I think that's some very wise words, considering what I got from Harley Benton and Toman, courtesy of DHL. Even if it does sound good, why would you want a cab that has I'm a cheapo written on it? Because most of us have grown up and realized that the audience doesn't care what the badge on the product says, it's what's coming out of the speakers that's actually fucking important. God, seriously, bro, that was one of the best mixes you've ever done. It sounded amazing and I want to hit myself in the head with it. Oh, dude, thank you so much for that. I really do appreciate the kind words. Uh, in case you guys were wondering what the hell he's talking about, it was this mix right here. Now, just to be clear, that mix was done with the El Cheapo Harley Benton cab that Matt 926 is too chicken shit to try out because he's afraid of what his friends will say. For the rest of you guys who don't give a shit about that and just want good results, yeah, check out the Harley Benton cab. It sounds incredible. Great job, Harley Benton. Can we get a run through of the mix for this? I'm curious what kind of EQ or inserts you had to get that sound. Just a quick rundown here. We mic'd the bottom speaker of that cab with an SM57 and one of these. This is a Lewitt 640 TS. This mic's an absolute fucking monster. It's also reprogrammable for pickup pattern, but this was just straight cardioid mode. Killer, killer mic on guitars. But you don't necessarily have to go with that. You can use other condensers as well. Uh, that was just brought in maybe about 8 dBs under the 57 just to kind of thicken things up a little bit. And then everything went through my Tegler Pultec EQ. I've got a video on that right here. Uh, I would definitely recommend checking it out. Tegler makes some absolutely incredible stuff and it's what I use to get my guitars to fit into a mix so well. I, I go pretty in depth on that. I get it. It's not exactly the cheapest option. The Tegler stuff's absolutely incredible though. And the best thing about it is you can ask them to send you one and they'll let you try one out for two weeks risk-free, which I think is really awesome. That's why I recommend them. In all fairness, the execs at Hughes and Kettner have payments to make on their mansion and the Alps, Ferrari, Mega Yacht, and environmental causes to make your natural gas furnace and stove illegal. Good point. All those luxuries do cost money and they've got to get it from somewhere and that's usually you, the consumer. Hey guys, real quick, I want to tell you about a product that I've been using for years and that's Manscaped. 
Now I first learned about them back in 2019 and this is the one product I always take with me when traveling because what it prevents is not a joke. Call it what you want, chafing, crotch rot, whatever it is, it's unpleasant and can be downright painful. Now, most of humanity has figured out how to stay warm. So the need for pubic hair is kind of a leftover relic of evolution. And the two main factors of chafing are moisture and friction. And the first step to preventing chafing is getting rid of the thing that traps heat by design. You work hard for a living and there's a good chance you're on your feet and moving around. Believe me, I get it. I built many vans for 27 years. If you're on the job or you're on the stage, taking some preventative measures ahead of time can save you a lot of discomfort. Manscaped's got what you need. They've got the brand new fourth generation trimmer with a ceramic blade designed to reduce accidents as well as it's got a 4K spotlight so you can see where you're going. It's so simple to use, even a bass player could do it. Check out the new Performance Package 4.0. It's got the mower, but it's also got the new Weed Whacker 2.0 for nose and ear hair, which to be completely honest, I could really use. There's also the Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant and the Crop Reviver Ball Toner Spray, which is a great way to uh, revive yourself, shall we say. They also threw in a pair of free gifts, the anti-chafing boxers and the shed travel bag. Now, I'm really happy to be working with Manscaped because I can honestly say, since I got my first mower back in 2019, it's improved my quality of life. Go to manscaped.com today and get 20% off and free international shipping when you use the promo code SSStudios at checkout. That's 20% off plus free shipping with promo code SSStudios at manscaped.com. I'm missing something here, Glenn, but I think maybe you're just trying to pull the wool over our eyes or just lazy to give us the full truth. How can your video clip of the Harley Button sound be accurate when you show the same clip that was used for another video you uploaded 10 months ago titled Celestia and Tom and deny this about the Vintage 3? How is it possible to use the same video clip for both videos when you purported to get the Harley Button speaker cap on August 11th, 2023? Sure, I get it. They are both Celestian speakers, but one was clearly recorded and uploaded 10 months ago. I love your show, Glenn, but what gives? I think you owe us an explanation here at the very least. Maybe there's another explanation I'm just not understanding. Keep on rocking, brother. <laughs> okay, great lovely name okay little note on that if you're gonna put the word great in your fucking name you better earn it Alexander the Great earned the title he conquered half the world what have you conquered besides dinner now I'm just gonna call this out right now okay I get it you think there's some vast conspiracy going on here to pull the wool over your eyes and you've gotten to the bottom of this but you don't know the whole story here's the thing I need to get videos out the door. I usually do two to three videos a week, sometimes four, sometimes five, all depending on my workload. And the way how to do that is I have to reuse some of the demo tracks every now and then because I just don't have time to bring a band in once a week, track, mix, get everybody organized, all the rest of it, edit. It's just, that's an awful lot of work to do that. So I work from a bank of tracks and I try and mix them up. I've got something like 74, 75 songs ready to go. And it's just that one came up again because I'm a big fan of that particular guitar player. He goes by the handle Mercurial and you can find him over on the SMG Discord. The guy's a brilliant player. And I really love that piece of music he cooked up. A lot of the people playing on the show these days are recruited from the SMG Discord, just guys who are big fans of the show and want to participate in one way or another. And I'm more than happy to put them on. If you even go back a little bit further, I did an instructional video on how to shoot guitar videos because the first submissions I got looked so fucking terrible. How it works is I've got the drum tracks ready to go and I'll send those to those guys and they'll compose a piece of music for me and I'll use a direct track, a DI, and then I'll send a reamp out to whatever it is I'm doing the demo on, whether it being an amp or a cabinet or a mic or something like that. I work through reamp and I've been reamping guitars since like 2005, something like that. I got my first reamp box. Uh, these days I'm using the signal art reamp boxes. These are absolutely incredible. I can't recommend them enough. They're the absolute best I've ever used in the last, you know, 18 years or whatever of that I've been doing reamping. They're just, they've never let me down. They're absolutely phenomenal. Once again, the brand name is signal art, really fantastic stuff. So while I did use the same piece of music, I did not use the same mix for that Harley Benton cabinet, the guitars were reamped through it using the Lewitt and the 57 that I mentioned a couple of comments ago, and we got a new mix. And then that whole mix is going through all this new hardware that's just kind of off to the side of the camera here. 
you can't exactly see uh, what I've got here. I've got two giant racks full of just all this amazing outboard gear, including some Tangler stuff and some SSL stuff that I'm using on Kick and Snare. As of late, that sounds really freaking great. Once again, I've done this just in the name of efficiency so I can continue making content in a timely fashion for you guys. Hopefully that clears things up. People pay for weddings. This is just a specific example of my own little phrase, wants pay, needs starve. People resent having to pay for the things they need, especially when the price goes up on them unexpectedly. Groceries, gas, taxes, etc. But when it comes to things they want, they have no problem whipping out a credit card to make them pay for present them's want of the week. And weddings are huge, desperate wants by people. You can literally get married in a courtroom for next to nothing, but they want a huge ceremony with a big cake and a crowd of their friends and family. They want those memories, so they'll pay through the nose to get them. Dude, that's a fucking phenomenal observation. Bravo. Oh, well done. That's a that's a great point. So uh, that's something to keep in mind, you guys, out when you're thinking about your new next gear purchase. Sit on it for a month and really ask yourself, do I want it or do I actually need it? I remember I was going to pick up a guitar, you know, many years ago in a pawn shop in the 90s. My buddy looked at me and said, do you really need that? And I'm like, yeah, good point. It'd just be fun to have, but do I need it? Absolutely not. So if you're struggling, just remember that, especially when it comes to things like DoorDash and other uh, delivery convenience services that you're going to pay through the nose for because you're too fucking lazy to walk over to the kitchen and microwave yourself something. Just a little bit of context on there. You guys have heard me say numerous times, uh, the happiest people in the world are the people who pay for experiences. But getting married? Yeah. <laughs> Might not be the best experience choice. It's better off, you know, uh, maybe take a trip somewhere together and see how well you, you manage in a new situation and how well you can tolerate each other. That's a good way to tell if you should get married or not. Audio engineering schools are the modern equivalent of Sears Glamour Shots and modeling and talent agency shopping mall hustles of the 80s. The curriculum is specifically tailored to fleece naive, eager young parents' credit cards. Ooh, that's so true, it fucking hurts. I mean, seriously. I said at the beginning of the video, what hit records have I done? None, none, not at all. The, the biggest thing I ever did was the first two Woods of Ypres records, and those were black metal records, very niche audience. Among the black metal crowd, very popular, but among ma the mainstream, no. Not even remotely close to being popular. And you know what, that's absolutely fine. You know what, I've never ever once woke up in the morning like, damn, I really wish I had recorded a platinum record. It's not the key to my happiness, that's for sure. That's the thing about recording schools, they're very expensive, they can be a lot of fun, but at the end of the day, you're gonna wind up with a useless piece of paper because the industry just really doesn't give a shit where you went to school. All they care about is what's coming out of the speakers. And if you can learn that on your own, there's some amazing online courses you can take and for a whole lot less money than going to a full-time school. I'd recommend that instead. Now, I'm not saying that, because I've got Spectre Digital and Spectre Academy. Uh, there's many, many other great online schools as well. Go take a look, see what's out there and see what works for you. I have a recording studio in Helena, Montana and the number of chiselers who try to sneak studio time for free is truly obnoxious. No, you are not gonna wow me so much I am uh, odd to just be in your presence and what just want to be band buddies with you. It is a service I provide and if you don't see value in it, go back to the pavement outside. But, but, but you'll get to record us. We're awesome, haven't you heard our material? Sadly, that happens more often than it should. Oh man, you know, it, it, dealing with musicians can be very interesting. Just be aware of that if you're thinking about opening up a home studio to the public, because you're gonna be inviting people you might not like into your home. Could you make a video about impedances, the total difference between 8 ohms and 16 ohm speaker, and the difference between wiring the cabin 8 and 16 ohms? It's confusing as hell, and I noticed the speakers sound really different from an impedance version to another confirmed by the guy from Jensen in the K. Coley interview. Yeah, you know, that's an interesting thing. I've actually got some selections kicking around. I've got some 8 ohms and some 16 ohms of the same speaker model, so uh, that video has kind of been on my to-do list forever, and we should really check that out. I don't know how much of a total difference it really is going to make, Fucked if I know, to be honest with you. I mean, because you go from speaker to speaker in the same cab and you're gonna get a massive tone shift. So I don't know if it's anything we can actually measure. Anytime I've ever asked a speaker manufacturer about that, what's the difference between eight and 16 ohms? I really don't get a clear answer. So I'm, I'm very curious about that. That's something I'm definitely gonna have to investigate at one point or another. And first off, I want to say thank you for the content. Legit, I've learned a metric ton uh, from your videos as an amateur musician and producer. Second, any suggestions for an affordable compressors and EQs? Cheers from Minnesota. Uh, for affordable compressors, I'd say go look up a used Drummer DL241. They're basically two SSL uh, channel compressors in a box, and you can probably get them for under 500 bucks these days. If you find one, go, go look on eBay, Reverb, that kind of thing. Absolutely phenomenal. As for EQs, hmm. The Trident ADBs are actually pretty good. Those are in 500 series format. Uh, that's one thing I'd, I'd really recommend is if you're looking for cheap EQs and compressors, you can integrate into your DAW setup, get a 500 series rack. Because you will find bargains that way. Speakers 
do change the tone. Thanks, Glenn. That damn new V30 really brought my Crush Pro back to life. Oh, time somebody finally fucking listened. All right, everybody, that's it for this episode. Thanks again for watching. Thanks for subscribing, all that good stuff. Uh, once again, don't forget to check out this show's sponsor, Manscaped. I'll have a link to that in the description below. And if you want to get some more information on awesome guitar EQing, check out this video right here. I'll see you next time.